Today I want to demonstrate how I baste a large quilt without breaking my back and without special tools. I will say it goes a lot faster if you have an extra set of hands, but it's absolutely not necessary. Is this the best possible way to baste a quilt? Who knows? I don't, I mean, I'm a quilting enthusiast, not a quilting expert, so all I know is that it's far and away a better process than how I used to do it. On the floor. This method is sort of like the pool noodle method, but without the pool noodles. All you really need is your quilt layers, something to baste with, like um, safety pins or a needle and thread, and you'll also need a square or rectangular surface. I'm going to start out by showing you each step using a small um, sample piece, and then I'll show you what that step looks like on a large quilt. This piece here represents the quilt top. So before we get started organizing it, or arranging it, or whatever, we're going to mark the um, center point. And I'm just going to use a pin here, but you would want to use something that's um, washable. So I'm just going to mark my center. I'm going to attempt to mark my center. I wrote more on my finger. <laughs> now you would lay your quilt top out on your surface. In my case, um, I use a kitchen table. And you're going to smooth out all the bumps and creases and things. Ideally, you will have pressed this before you started. Oh, and also move your center mark line away from you. So you're going to lay your quilt top out right side up and then you're going to make nice gentle um not quite folds it, they're sort of like a, a fold roll combination and you're going to make sure that your um edges stay even you don't want to start folding crooked so keep an eye on your edges and smooth as you go if need be and then set your uh, folded quilt top aside. Next up, we're going to prep our backing and batting. So we'll just start with the quilt backing and unfold it and smooth it out. Get all those creases and bubbles out to the best of your ability. And again, ideally you would press this I didn't because it's just a sample. Then we're going to layer the batting on top. Okay, so to recap, we've got batting and the backing right side down. We're going to find the center of this too. And we're going to want to mark the center on the batting side. Now it's time to get your ruler out and mark a registration line. So um, ideally you have a um, an excess around your quilt, right? An excess of batting and backing. And you probably have a number in mind, like three inches or something. So what you would do is you would say, well, for this one I'll use two inches. So I'll line up my two inch mark and I'm gonna make a line to help me register my quilt so it gets on straight and then I'm going to take my center line here line up this line with one of these lines here and extend my center line to the, my registration line now I'm going to reposition this so that that registration mark and center line are away from me and I'm going to do another fold roll combination here. 
Remember, batting side up. Okay, we've got both of our rolls all prepped and ready here, and now we just have to combine them. So set aside your quilt top, and we're going to unroll the batting and the backing just a little bit. And if you notice any bumps, try to work them out by going from the middle out. Okay, bring in the quilt top and we're going to line up this center mark here with the center mark here. And we're also going to align the quilt edge with this registration mark. Smooth outwards and unroll. Now is the time when you start basting. So for this demo, I'll use some quilting pins, but for my um, larger quilt, I thread basted. So the goal is to get these um, evenly spaced, and that's going to be kind of hard to show with this tiny little piece, but I, I'll go um, two, one, two, one. People often say that you want your um, safety pins or your thread basting to be about a fist width apart, but you can cheat one way or the other once in a while, so I don't think it makes that big of a difference. So with this little sample, we would be ready to unroll and go to the next section. But on a larger sample, it might um, have the sides hanging over the edges of your surface. So you would simply slide your quilt this way and work on what you missed over here. And then when that section's done, you'd slide it the other way and work on the quilt over on this side. After you've done the whole, um, I guess maybe you'd call it a row, you're going to recenter your quilt and drag it down and it will overhang your table. And then you simply unroll more of your quilt. And you would baste like before, smoothing from the middle out and up. You don't want to smooth this way because you might create a bubble um, butting up to the pieces that, or the parts that you've already basted. So middle out and up. On your big quilt, once you've reached this point where more of your quilt is hanging off the table than is on the table, I recommend um, some sort of weight system. 
I use these, but you could also use like photo albums or cookbooks or something. Just anything that is heavy and won't leave a mark on your quilt. Of course, it's not really necessary for this tiny little sample. And there you go. You've got yourself a little basted quilt, or hopefully a very large basted quilt. without any fuss or any extra tools. I'm not counting these as an extra tool, by the way, because, I mean, everybody's got heavy books somewhere. If you liked this video, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.